Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of Effortless. I am your host today, Piddle, and with me is Spiegel, as usual. Could, could you talk any faster right now? You know, we have to get it's through so this fast. episode really quick. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, we only have 20 minutes. This is a 20-minute special episode of Effortless. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just kidding. It's going to be even longer than usual. Probably. Yeah. Even though you're going to try to keep me really short on time. It's That's not right. going to happen. I'm telling you that right now. So you've already sort of teased it. Why, why would we be going so long on time for this episode? Because... Unlike most weeks, I played a lot of games. How many games did you play? Let me, let, okay, let me just preface this real quick. If this is the first episode of Effortless that you're watching, number one, I'm sorry. Number two, uh, we've been trying to play 52 games in 52 weeks, which is something we try to remind you guys of every, every so often, just so you don't forget what we're doing when we say 52-52. And I did not beat any games this week, but that's okay because I'm a little bit ahead. Piddle, you've been kind of far behind for a little while now, right? I've been falling behind a little bit here and there. So how are you How are you doing now? How many games did you beat this week? So should I do a drum roll again like I did on the absolutely. last one? So this week, I mean, it's a good week if I finish two games, right? This yeah, week I finished good, good we not two, not three, not four, not five, Hurry up. but six games. Not six, not seven. I wish it was seven. LeBron reference. <laughs> eight eight <laughs> titles getting on to the show yeah i don't know how i finished six games this week because i don't know if i've ever finished more than three games and that's even apart from doing this little project this uh this 52 52 you just you don't play that many games in a week that's that's hard to do man that's like a game a day it is very difficult to do yeah um, so the reason I didn't beat any this week is just because I was the victim of starting a lot of games and just not finishing any of them. Uh, I started, what I started? I started Chibi Robo Ziplash. It was terrible, so I took it back. I started Pikmin 2. I just wasn't in the mood for a strategy game, so I took it back. Or I didn't take it back. I just put it back on my shelf. Um, I started uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, and I'm like, what am I doing? I already wasn't in the mood for a strategy game, so I put it back. And then I started Ocarina of Time 3D, which is what I'm playing right now. Fire Emblem Awakening, you put that down. I did put it down. I didn't get far into it at all. Have you I got played like, it before? I, no, the thing. No, I've never played it before. But the thing is, I, I got like two minutes into it. And I'm like, okay. I'm not in the mood right now. I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna wait until I'm in a better mood to play it. But for now, you did have six games that you played this week. So what were they in order that you beat them? I guess. Yeah, unlike you, I, I didn't start games and, not finish them. I finished games that I had started a long time ago, or at least okay. a couple of them were that way. And uh, I beat Shadows of Mordor, Batman Arkham Knight, The Deer God, Halo 3, ODST, The Legend of Zelda, and The Walking Dead Episode 1. Okay. All right. Sounds like a good, uh, pretty diverse list, too, actually. Actually, actually, yeah, it was. Uh, well, first two games are sort of similar in a lot of ways. But the so I, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to speed test you and see how quickly you can do this. Um, you have... Uh, two minutes, two minutes to describe each game. Uh, so you have no more than twelve, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on an official timer when you start talking. So, so get ready for that. There's no way I can do this. But whenever you're, well, you better start. Your the clock is ticking. Wait, you have you didn't even tell me to start. No, well that was that's part of the game, bud. You have to. Say you're already behind. You have to say shadows more, of the, Mordor. No, the more time you Go. waste. Okay, shadows of Mordor. Go. All right, shadows of Mordor was a game very similar to Arkham Knight or the Arkham series. Uh, combat is essentially lifted straight from that series, but how Shadows of Mordor distinguishes itself is with its nemesis system. And it does that by giving you unique enemies that uh, like when they kill you, they become more powerful. And if you like defeat them in battle, they remember how you defeated them. So, they like this is a this is an RPG, right? It's, Shadows of Mordor. It's not an RPG. It's like an action game, an open world action game. It sounds boring. It really sort of was. Okay. <laughs> because unlike the Arkham games, which have a lot of the good parts of the Arkham games, is all the stealth in it. Shadows of Mordor does not have any stealth. It has more of, I'd say, an Assassin's Creed structure where you, there's just a ton of stuff in this open world to collect. The open world itself is pretty darn bland. There's like two different big areas. One is There's nothing I hate more than a bland open world, you know that? I, I think it's just it's like, hey, here's this big open space to explore in. Oh, and there's nothing to do, by the way. And that's so. why I started the game but didn't finish it, because 
the combat is really good, just like the Arkham games. I mean, it's streamlined in some ways. They add some new skills in other ways. Um, the story is actually pretty interesting, too. It sort of deals with, uh, I mean, the origins of the One Ring. So I really like that part of the game. So would you say it's actually like canon within the Lord of the Rings universe? It is t- technically not canon, but it's close enough that you feel like it could be canon, I guess. Okay. Um. So... Yeah, and the combat's really good, and the Nemesis system is interesting. It's just that's all there is to the game. So the reason I didn't finish it is because it just became a drag to do the same things over and over and over again. Um, And, yeah, like, you never want to lose to a Nemesis of yours because when you lose to a Nemesis, they only get stronger. So the next time you fight them, they're that much more difficult to kill. And one of the other cool things about it is uh, all these... Nemeses that you have in the game like there's the very high ranking um, orcs and then they have like bodyguards so usually if you try to go for a high ranking orc right away or orc high they have like two or three bodyguards following them so you're going to be in a fight with three four pretty powerful enemies all at once and it's just too much you'll probably die and they'll all increase in power. So the idea is to sort of like pick them off one at a time, like take out the lower ranking ones and then eventually go after the higher ranking ones. Um, And there's some other like tie-ins to like you deal with uh, Gollum in a few missions, but in the grand scheme of things, the incredibly boring overworld and just the fact that all there really is in the game is this combat or like this Arkham style combat. And I guess if you really want to say it, there's a tiny bit of stealth to it. It's just a okay game. It's not, it's not great. And after the nemesis with systems, or I should say after the uniqueness of the nemesis system, which is a really cool system. I have to say after the uniqueness of that wears off, it's just too bland to lift itself up to greatness. So I am actually pretty harsh with this one. And, I was debating between giving it a 3 and a 2.5, and I'm, wow. I'm going to go with a 2.5 out of 5. That is very harsh for a game that won many Game of the Year awards last year. Can you like can you account for that? Why did it win those awards? Uh, it's, it's actually sort of really interesting because I've seen the reactions or the thoughts on Shadows of Mordor now after, after some time has passed, and a lot of people look back on that game, and they just, they're like, blech, I that game really wasn't that amazing. Anyway, that's it. So, so we have like so much stuff. So we're going to keep rolling. Batman Arkham Knight very quickly. So Batman Arkham Knight is a almost a perfect game really brought down by one aspect and that is just that it's not very balanced in terms of what you're doing in the gameplay and that's due to the introduction of the Batmobile. It's it's not even that it's really that bad like when I think about the... There's just too much of it. Yeah, when I think about how they designed the Batmobile gameplay, I don't think of any way that they could have made it better. It They almost pulled off the Batmobile perfectly. I mean, the thing is a tank. When you're driving through the streets, you're just crashing through. Um, like, if, if there's a bridge and you're, like, driving under, if you run into the columns, you'll just sm- obliterate the columns and, like, keep driving through. If you cut a corner too tight around a building like the side of the building will just like get torn away from it. So it feels super powerful. It feels awesome when you're driving it. You can jettison Batman out of the top of it and go straight into gliding throughout the city, which is really cool. This thing sounds even better than like the go, go gadget car or whatever. (laughs) The go, go gadget car. Oh my God. How come there's never been an inspector gadget video game? I'm sure there is one. There probably is one on the Nintendo or something. They didn't even have, they didn't even have like a movie tie in when that horrible, like Matthew Broderick one came out. Oh, oh, don't even bring that up. Don't even bring that up. It ruined so many childhoods. People who grew up in the eighties, like you. Yep. Like me. It's like, this movie sucks. So continuing on with, with Batman Arkham Knight. No, this is more important. The combat too. The combat of Arkham Knight's Batmobile is actually really interesting in terms of like how they approach it. It's, it's engaging and it's challenging. There's just way too much of it. So I feel like if they had struck to the correct balance in the game, 
it would have been phenomenal. But the issue is, is the Batmobile t- accounts for almost like half of the game, it feels like. You spend so much time screwing around in the Batmobile that it detracts from h- how they expanded Batman's move set in combat. So there's even more moves for you to pull off, which is almost insane to think about because it felt like Arkham City was starting to get a little extreme with how much there was to do in the combat. And it's almost a perfect game. It's just there's too much of the Batmobile. So with that said, I was leaning to a 3.5, but I decided to bump it up to a 4 out of 5 because if you're you... are being really harsh this week. Almost yeah. a perfect game and you give it a 3. I, you're thinking I know. about a 3.5. That's how much the Batmobile ruins it. So yeah. I have to give it a 4 out of 5 because I think if you enjoy the Batmobile, this game is going to be practically the perfect game for you. And if you hate the if you hate the Batmobile, it's going to be a three out of five for you. So, so that's right in the middle. Yeah, that's right in the middle. I makes feel like. sense. Um, so, what was your next one? It was Halo Three ODST, or was it a different one? It was the Deer God. The Deer God. So, what is this one about? So it's a oh man, it's a really weird one. It's sort of like a, a roguelike game, I would guess I would say, um, in that it's a randomly generated world and it's it's a two D game sort of like a 2D platformer with some basic combat in it. And it's about a hunter who is going to like shoot a deer, but he doesn't notice that there's two wolves sneaking up on him. The two wolves kill him, and he gets resurrected as a deer. and has The two wolves represent uh, the Greenpeace organization, by the way. <laughs> really? I can't re- no, no, I'm just <laughs> joking. Maybe. So, yeah, you have to... Uh, redeem yourself i guess in the bot like as you're in the body of a um as a deer and there are puzzles to solve as you go throughout the game and my issue with it is it just wasn't like they tried to make the world randomly generated and whatnot but really all it meant was it took little chunks of pre-made areas and it would just loop through them over and over and over again so and it and it looped through them randomly. That's what I should say. So it'd be like taking a big giant Mario level and then chopping it up into like 30 pieces. And then as you play through the game and keep going from left to right, it would just take like piece number 27 and then do it after piece number 15 and then piece number 16. That sounds like what most people do in Super Mario Maker. So I don't know. It works for some people, I think. <laughs> And then there's other issues where the game would glitch and it was supposed to load an, like I'm waiting for it to load a new area for me to solve the next puzzle. So, so and I would clear, spend, is it, is this an indie game on like PC yeah, or, or it's okay. a, it's an indie game that was kickstarted. Um, and it was originally on PC and now it's on Xbox one. I don't know if it's on any other systems. I actually only really played it because it was a free game with, uh, games with gold. Okay. So that's the reason I played it. And I, I ended up getting far enough into it that like, even though it glitched out on me and I had to reset the game in order to continue throughout the game, I got far enough into it where I was like, eh, you know, I might as well just finish it. And in the grand scheme of things, the combat just, the combat was not satisfying and it was frustrating in some ways. Like I would hurt myself when I didn't mean to, and you had a stamina gauge that would like slowly build up. So you couldn't do too many attacks too quickly I mean, I guess some people think it's hard. It wasn't really that hard for me. I, at a point, I rarely died unless I fell into a pit. You're like a platforming master, though, so I don't think that's too surprising. So, yeah, I'd have to give it a 2 out of 5. It's Oh, that's really low. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Yeah, but, okay. 2 that's, out of 5. That's probably, you know what? That's probably the lowest score that we've given any game this year. It's just not worth playing. I mean, the fact that I, I, was, I spent an hour at one point trying to get to the next puzzle, and it never spawned. So there, that alone was an issue. And then the combat's not really that good. And the only thing that the game really has going for it, I feel like, is the music was pretty beautiful at times, and the graphics had this really unique style that I enjoyed. But that's it. All right, so let's move on. Um, I did not play it with, uh, with the manual. So in grand scheme of things, Legend of Zelda, still a fantastic game. A little frustrating with the controls sometimes just because... Just because it's only four directions. Yeah, it's only four directions. Uh, you can only stab instead of swipe your sword. 
I've never been that good at the game. I've always been the guy who just goes and immediately finds all the heart pieces in the overworld. Yep, that's me too. And immediately goes and like gets the blue ring. And this is yep, this yep. is largely due be- to the fact that as a kid I played it so much. I essentially memorized where all the heart pieces were and where all the um all the like secret rupee stashes were where you could get free rupees. It's a secret to everybody. Yeah. So I knew where a lot of those were, and that's pretty much what I did when I played the game. Is I just got the that's sort of the way I'm treating Ocarina of Time. Also, like as I'm going through it, like I'll talk about it a little bit more next week. But um, because yeah, like once you get to, I feel like level seven and eight aren't very hard, but levels five and six just kick my butt all the time unless I unless I have like these upgraded items because you have to suddenly start dealing with whiz robes. Oh my god, the freaking dark nuts too, the yeah. wizard robes. I I hate that. They're so hard. Yeah. There's there's one I I can't remember what level it was in. I think it might have been 6 where um there's one room and you don't have to kill all the dark nuts in it. You actually... uh, yeah, that's 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 6 because I remember I struggled with it so much and I I think I died like 30 plus times on that room. And you don't have to kill all the dark nuts in it. And even if you do, all you get is like a stash of bombs, which is sort of useless because in all likelihood, you used up all your bombs to kill the dark nuts, which is at least how I handled them. And I think yeah. I think this room has like eight, maybe nine dark nuts. It's just yeah, like I think that's right. packed with the dark nuts. And if it's... you've played the original game, you know what the room we're talking about because it's a very hard room, one of the hardest rooms in all of gaming. It's almost as hard as the the room that you go into and gone home and you realize that the whole game was just a big disappointment. But I think it's level five. Um, Fine, don't laugh at that joke. I thought it was funny. I, I haven't played Gone Home yet. Oh, it's okay. That's why. It's a big disappointment. So inside joke for all of our listeners who have actually yeah, played it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's level five, though, that really gives me challenges with the whiz robes because I think there's like a series of rooms that you have to go through, and it's like you have to fight a bunch of whiz robes because it's a shutter door. It doesn't open up until you kill all of them. And then you have to go through another room full of whiz robes. Then you have to go through like another room with... Uh, I think it's Manhandla, the like. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember all this very vividly. Yeah, the four-part uh, piranha plant, and that is that dungeon just always gives me such problems because if like Manhandla deals a ton of damage, and you pretty much have to pray that you can kill him in like one to three. Got, bombs. Gotta use the bombs from Manhandla too, right? Yeah. You have you to, just, yeah. And by the way, Manhandla is just the worst in like every game that it's in. It's terrible in Hyrule Warriors too. I don't know if you've played that game. I have not. But Manhandla sucks in that game. It's just it kills you every time. <laughs> just it's the worst. The worst enemy ever. Yeah. Uh, so score it. What's so your score? I, score? I know your score. Still love it. I actually, when I played it, I got halfway through, stopped playing, turned off. Oh my god! Yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah, I turned off my Wii. And then came back to it thinking that I had saved it, and I hadn't saved it, so I lost all the progress, so I had to play through the game all the way again. So, you know... So you really beat it almost two times. Essentially, yeah. So, great game, though. Really enjoyed it. It's still... I still love how you can go anywhere and do anything. The second time I played it, I I didn't go through... Like, the first time I was going level one, two, three, four, five, in that order. But the second time I was just, like, level one, and then... I collected rupees, got the blue ring, did level three because it's right by that area and you don't need any special items from level two. Then, uh-huh. then I went to level four because it's on the way to level two. Then I went to level two. So I sort of went in a reverse order. But yeah, great game. Still have to give it a five out of five because I feel like if you have the instruction manual and you're playing it for the first time, it's awesome. And if you're not playing it for the first time, if you're playing it for the umpteenth time like I just did... You can pretty much play it however you want. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. Walking Dead, I don't know if it was episode one or season one. It was, I really liked it. Um, whatever it was, we'll figure it out. And we'll put it in the, con- we'll put it in the description of just what version of you'll, the game you'll I You'll put it in played. the description. Yes. I'll I'm not going to do all that work. I already um, have to find all the trailers for our top 50 games and stuff. So it, I liked it because it was like playing an episode of The Walking Dead. And it was really interesting. It had interesting characters. I enjoyed it far more than I expected to. I thought I thought I was going to get like an hour into it or like a half hour into it and just be like, mm, not going to do this. But I actually found myself really interested about 15, 20 minutes into it. So I ended up playing it all the way through. Uh, 
and it's uh, sort of like a Sam and Max title or a point and click just with a controller. And I'd have to give it a four out of five in the grand scheme of things because I really like the story. And yeah, it was just well presented. Yeah, so find out if you finished it, and if you, if you didn't, then we'll play it together because I also have The Walking Dead on Vita, and I wanna I I do want to play that soon. So all right, man. So, yeah. yeah, if it wasn't, maybe I'll have to get the next part on Vita because it was really, really sort of cool. Especially if you're a fan of Walking Dead, I feel like you have to try it out. So last game, Halo Three ODST, which first off, what does ODST stand for? I never knew, and I I need to know now. It is. I actually just found this out because um i've sort of been on a halo binge lately in anticipation of halo 5 and i'm i'm listening to the fall of reach on audiobook but enough of that halo 3 odst odst stands for orbital drop shock troopers i believe boy am i glad they shortened it orbital drop shock troopers it sounds like a i don't know what it sounds like it sounds like the first part sounds like a drug like the orbital drops Okay. What? <laughs> are you, hey man, are you you got that those orbital drops? I I don't even know where you're going with this. It's like you know you you drop orbit. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. This is effortless. I love it. We're almost thirty minutes into the show. It's like whoa, why am I still listening to this? God. Um, Halo okay. Three ODST. So grand scheme of things, it's it's just it's just Halo Three, right? It's it's Halo it's Halo Three, but it's like they approach the story in a very different, um, unusual way. Like, it doesn't feel like a normal AAA game. It feels like something completely different. It feels like one of those B-list movies that you really enjoy, like a B-list action movie that you're like, oh my gosh, this is actually like really sort of cool how they handled all of this. And that's, what I would, that's how I would describe Halo 3 ODST. It's like a Halo game just... The story is presented in a really different kind of way. It has nothing to do with Master Chief. It sort of occurs during the same events as Halo 2, I believe. And um, the gameplay, though, is awesome. The weapons in it, the especially the pistol and the uh, SMG, I believe it is, make just such a comeback in these in Halo 3 ODST. They're so satisfying to control and wield that like I looked for those two items as often as I could. So, I don't know. It's Halo. It was well presented. Um, I think because it just sort of lacked the same sort of epic feel of the other Halo games that I'm only going to give it a 4 out of 5. But other than that, it was a really good game. That's that. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Good week of gaming for you. I'm going to talk about some games next week. I don't think I'm going to beat 6, but I might beat like 2. Because I'm almost done with Ocarina of Time. So, what do we do now? I think we start talking about uh, this cool new thing that we just heard some great news about, and that is Nintendo's next system. Well, the, you are the host here, so drag me into it, although I do have the quote, so maybe yes. I should just read the quote. You, you do have the quotes. Well, so pretty much the news coming out today is that NX's um, development kits are out in the wild, and... And for what it's worth, we we already talked about this on the, the Minish recap that we posted on Friday the 16th, um, but uh, th- th- we're recording on the 16th for this as well, and, and we there were there was more stuff that came out after we were done with the recap, and I'm like, we should talk about this. Yeah, it's pretty pretty exciting stuff. This is huge, right? Yeah. So, so, so okay, long stop story teasing him. St- <laughs> sorry, long story short, or, well, I haven't even told the story yet, but... <laughs> Dev kits are out in the wild. It sounds like they are. The system is going to be powerful. Um, sounds like it has a mobile component to it. So this might be a system that you can play both at home and mobile, which is what a lot of people will start. Basically, s- what we've been suspected. predicting. We've been predicting this for like a year, maybe more here at the ZBN. So good job for us, I guess. Yep. And um, well, Nintendo sort of hinted in that direction because they said like they wanted to have like a unified sort of system and because they they just couldn't spread themselves out it'd be you'd have like a year or two of great games on the wii or the wii u and then a year or two of crap and then or absolutely nothing and then you'd have a year or two of awesome content on the ds or the 3ds and then a year or two of absolutely nothing while they switch to Wii and Wii U focus which is exactly what's happening again right now yeah um, so but this so, sort of gives them the ability to make games for both 
it sounds like. And one of the so, most exciting things, and I'll let you get into this. Yeah, right so this is, for, this is, is, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'll let you get into it right I'm after just so I'm excited. Like, I want to get into the, yeah. Is that they're saying uh, this new console, or the, the NX, the chips and the processors that are in it are comparable to pretty much like the industry leaders. So that's PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. From MyNintendoNews.com, Nintendo NX likely more powerful than PS4 and Xbox One. The article says, The internet is abuzz with positive news for the big N following their seeming release of Nintendo NX software development kits. However, Nintendo Forums has recently spoken with major game publishing companies based in the U.S., and it looks like the Nintendo NX will be outpacing both the PS4 and Xbox One. According to the unnamed publishing company, one software demo, this is a quote, one software demo included with a kit crunches so many polygons that it's currently impossible to run at 60 frames per second using a current generation Intel CPU and a nearly top of the line graphics card. Like, holy crap, this thing is powerful. Like they can't even they can't even like run the software demo because it's or what what is it? It's you they can't run the demo on their like generally pretty good Intel CPU, I yeah. think is what they're getting from this. Yeah, and that would not be the case with the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, I don't think. Yeah. Um so I think so we're going to do a little bit of NX talk right now and we we played the the real or ridiculous game earlier today um where I where I said that it was ridiculous that this that that the NX would be more powerful than the PS4 and the Xbox 1 but now we seem to be getting more reports to the contrary. So maybe maybe I should eat my words a little bit here and just admit that I might have been wrong initially. Maybe the NX really will be this powerful. What do you think? I think it will be. And I think this is this could potentially be a huge thing for Nintendo. Yeah, so what what does this mean for them? Like d- does this mean they can compete again? Does this mean they will blow start to blow the competition away? I mean, we need to pump the brakes a little bit, I think, on something like that. I mean, could this really like turn it around for Nintendo? And then some? If well, we've talked about this, but Pretty much Nintendo needs to have the online infrastructure for this system or it's all going to crumble. It's all going to be for naught. If if you like get the system and you want to play with your friends and it's you're jumping through hoops in order to play your games with friends, not going to matter if the games look better than the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox yeah, One Yeah, who would want who would want to play Destiny on a Nintendo system when it's like so hard to do so? Yeah, no one would want to do with that or deal with that. So, even if it is even if it is free, like because that's what we have right now. <laughs> exactly so yeah nobody wants to deal with nintendo online really and it it's just a hassle so yeah i feel like if it's the most powerful system especially with the timing um i don't i mean do you see the playstation 4 the xbox one having life cycles as like shorter than the last generation i would imagine that they would just because the ps4 and the xbox one when they when they came out they weren't these aren't like super powerful, you know, crazy advanced consoles. They're just sort of, they're advanced, but they're already being outstripped easily by like most PCs that are out on the market right now. Well, part of that has to do with these consoles. And this is part of the reason why I didn't really want to jump into the next generation is the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, their graphics cards are, they were like mid-range like less than mid-range cards or video cards compared to what you could get in your PC when they came out. And exactly. They were already middle of the pack, and now it's like they're just... I mean, you know, the, the games still look good, and I, you know, I don't want to get into the whole like graphics horror argument about like, oh, these games look bad, and those games look better, and all that. I don't want to do that, because the, the, the interesting thing, though, is just comparing what the NX might be in comparison to those two systems, because they will likely be its main competitors. Exactly. So I think it's actually, it might be a year late, but if you look at the release frame for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, they've been out for, what, two years now two years yeah two years two years now so if the nx comes out next year which is what everybody's sort of predicting now that means that the playstation 4 and the xbox one have if we're going by the previous generation four more years on the market before they're replaced so that would leave at least they usually have pretty long life cycles especially the sony consoles that would leave like three good really solid years for the 
the NX to be the strongest system on the market. And it sounds like by far. The question is, in my mind now, what does this mean for Nintendo? Do you think that they can pull people back in with just power alone? I mean, they need to get third parties on board, I think, before they can do anything. They need games like Destiny. They need Call of Duty, unfortunately. They need Madden. They need Battlefront. You know, like, these aren't games that you can just, like, say, oh, you know, the other consoles have them, but we have, like, our first party, so everything's going to be fine, because this is what happened with the Wii U. Nintendo fans bought it. Nobody else did. Well, that's part of the other or the other interesting part about it's, this it, release like, is because before, it sounds like Nintendo is really pushing like, hey, we have this brand new system to make it as easy as possible for you to develop your game, to self-publish it, and we're going to give you, like, you need any help, you just contact us right away. We have this brand new um, contact system, it sounds like they have. So I that, mean, what in, what in the world would ever possess Nintendo to just be like, yeah, we're going to throw our whole Japanese conservatism thing out the window, and we're just going to adopt this new business model immediately and just start doing things like that? I, I just It doesn't seem like a Nintendo move to me, which is why I'm still kind of sketchy on this rumor. I think because they need to. Maybe. May, you know, I mean, may, maybe they just realized, like, crap, we can't keep doing this. And I mean, they and they can't, really. Yeah, they can they can do it their own way for a long time, but it's just not realistic. And they just have to look at how their user base is dwindling. Um, yeah, they, that is absolutely an issue. They've they've lost the casual crowd very quickly from the Wii to mobile gaming, and so they need to do something to really. They need the core gamer. Yeah, they need the core gamer again. They need to, and they need to develop. Their and they don't. Brand they don't need name. some. They don't need some like half-ass like attempt like the Wii U was to bring together casual and core gamers. Exactly. Because that's basically what it ended up being. It just didn't work out. Because so they they need a system that you know tablet or not, gamepad or not, you know it it, it needs to be able to to deliver those hardcore experiences to the to the gaming community that they want. You know, unfor- unfortunately, a lot of gamers don't want to play the Mario game. You know, they, they want to play Destiny. They want to play NBA 2K, you know, and that and that's fine. But Nintendo exactly. just does not. O- they do not offer that. It's not even an option, which is why that people, I think, have fallen away from Wii U and, and Nin- Nintendo. I feel like Nintendo, like they're, they've been so focused on being like the family friendly company that maybe now they they're realizing that they're sort of in a, a brand image crisis with their name because you talk to people and how many times have you heard well i heard nintendo's going to go out of business or i hope nintendo stops making consoles just so i can have my games on my phone or on my xbox and not have to buy a stupid nintendo system and a lot of people have just stopped buying that nintendo systems yeah like smash brothers was expected to be this gigantic success that brought everyone over to the wii u but it turns out nobody bought it like i think it sold what three million units that's not even covering like all the wii u's that are out there yeah you just need they just need more content on their systems than they can possibly provide and so i think that's part of the reason why the nx is possibly going in this unified direction of both uh home and mobile and then also why they're really it seems like they're actually making concerted effort to make it as easy as possible for third parties and especially indie developers to start producing content for the NX. Now, I'm not sure where you're hearing or reading that particular fact about this, like regarding the the, the fact that they're trying to make it easier for third party developers. Um, but I do think, I mean, do you want to respond to that? I, I'll, I'll bring it up if I can and I'll, okay, I'll well, share I, it with you. And I mean, I do, I do think the, that in the description, sorry. Okay, in the, in the description, you'll link it or something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I do think that um, that just by having a more powerful console, like developers will probably in, at least initially be attracted to that because there is a good portion of the market that just cares about how the games look. And that sucks, by the way, but it's there. It it's exists. The truth. Yeah, it's a thing. So, you know, once we get over that, I think we'll all be a lot happier. Those people are out there, and those people will likely be attracted to the NX especially with all the like recent influx of throwaway money that people seem to have for video games. Exactly. Like people I like I did I did an $800 sale at work yesterday for a PS4 and this just seemed like a regular average middle class family. Like they didn't seem like they had a lot of money, 
but they were just investing in that PS4. And maybe people will invest in the NX the same way, knowing that five years down the line, it's still going to be more powerful than the PS4 and the Xbox One. That can't possibly change. They can't change the structure of those consoles. So, who knows? It'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, I don't know if it's too little too late. I feel like if they're the most powerful console, I'll, there will be developers who will look at it and say, wait a second, like, this is where I can most easily achieve my vision. And that's sort of the problem Nintendo had with the Wii is a lot of developers looked at it and they're like, I mean, this is really cool, but in terms of power, can I really yeah. accomplish what I want to accomplish? I mean, and granted, you know, you did get games like Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii and you got individual unique games like The Conduit and games that were very, very unique and Mad World and, and No More Heroes and were tailored specifically to that system. And they were great, but they, they didn't match what the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were offering in terms of like hardcore gaming experiences, Absolutely which, not, yeah. ult- which ultimately is what these, these companies offer with the more with the capability to create more powerful games, if that if that makes sense. Exactly. So I hope it does well because I also like how Nintendo still continues to try to push uh, gaming on the same couch together and other companies are sort of moving away from that as we've talked about. Moving away from it, most of them are gone. Did you, yeah. did you see that? Uh, well, actually, this is a really interesting one, but um, also... There, there seem to be there seems to be an abandonment of the uh, the campaign mode in certain games. Like they're they're not including the campaign in Black Ops Three. There's no camp. There's no single player campaign in the new Rainbow Six game. I'm not saying that's going away, but I'm saying that's something that Nintendo has always excelled at, and I, I like that that's still there. And this and that's is still why their thing. this is actually why I wanted to talk about Halo Five a little bit this week. And I think we won't really talk about it. In much no world do we have enough all. time to talk about Halo but, Five too. But just real quick, Halo Five doesn't. Halo Five, the Halo series, is doing away with split screen, which is absurd. I mean, that's what that series was all about from the beginning. From the beginning, that's what that the whole point of that series was. So that's, I don't know, I feel like the NX is on the right track. Um, I feel like Nintendo's almost doing, from what I've heard so far, they're doing everything that they really need to do in order to rebuild their brand image and hopefully like make a comeback. But we really have to see what they're going to do with the online still, I feel like. Um, so my last question to you is, uh, what... What do you feel the NX will have to be in order to be an immediate success? Like, actually, let me let me ask this way: should Should Nintendo focus on getting NX out there as quickly as they possibly can, like into the public eye? They said they didn't want to talk about it until next year, but how soon next year? Are we really going to wait till E three to hear anything about the system while the Wii U just kind of flops and flounders in the background? Like everybody knows this thing is on its way out, even if NX wasn't going to be around. Like the Wii U is just not; it's not doing anything. No, it's not. I feel like so. I mean, should should they focus on getting rid of the Wii U as soon as these? Like this, as soon as Star Fox is out, and as soon as Xenoblade Chronicles is sort of like out of the picture, and as soon as like the holiday season is over, do you think they should sort of like okay, now it's time to get serious? I don't think that they're gonna reveal any information about it until around E3. Oh, that's such a long time just, to wait. May- hey, just maybe they'll do, maybe they'll use like Space World in April again. That would be awesome. Just Bring back Space World. I'm expecting them to re- reveal that the NX is going to be backwards compatible. Like, I'm expecting it at this point. And if NX is backwards compatible, there's really no reason for them to show it off too soon. Because if they show it off too soon, they're, they're already floundering. Wii U sales are going to tank even more. So they're almost and- better off just waiting as long as possible and then saying, like, yeah, hey, the NX is coming out. And, oh, yeah, by the way, it's going to be immediately backwards compatible with all those Wii U games you've been dying to buy, but you haven't but you bought don't a, have Wii a Wii U yet. Yeah. Because... I think that's absolutely the case. I, I don't see a way that they can not announce that it's going to be backwards compatible just because they have so many sales. Like, you know how in football, teams will leave points on the field when they don't, you know, they make a stupid mistake or something. Nintendo has left so many sales on the floor of these video game stores. Like, all those people who want Mario Kart and Smash and Splatoon and for whatever reason, like, f- five or six great games is not enough to justify their purchase. You know, th- they are going to get those sales back exactly so at least i would hope so i i hope they do 
and hopefully that next is a more consumer oriented i guess i i don't know yeah. i already feel um, like the wii u is such a fantastic system and you already know my opinion of uh, my xbox one even though i play it quite a bit yeah the wii u is great uh if you don't have a wii u go buy one yes. just forget all the stuff we just said and just yeah. go buy a wii u just go buy great. one yeah help nintendo yeah. out all right is there anything else that you would like to talk about with nx no no, we've have we still have ten games to go through for oh, our top man. fifty games. This is right, oh, man. but what but the good week. news the good news is a couple of the games I think uh, have already been mentioned in uh, either of our lists. So, actually, this is true because yeah, so one I of think, the games I'm we'll, not even going to talk about. We'll be able to shorten it up a little bit, but yep. uh, so uh, so we have to go through forty through thirty six this week. Our countdown continues. Number forty. Number forty. Do you want to go first? Sure thing. For me, All it's right. South Park: The Stick of Truth. Wow. Which is a very unusual game. I did not really anticipate putting it on my list. This is an RPG. It uh, came yes. out last year. It's an RPG made by Obsidian. Um, and, yeah, it's it's a South Park game. But published by Ubisoft. Yeah, published so, by Ubisoft. That's yeah. right. Uh, wasn't it, I believe it was originally a THQ game, and THQ <laughs> went under. So, oh, poor THQ. So Obsidian, it was, like, sitting on this game essentially completely finished game and they're like oh no we need a publisher for this game like now i'm so, surprised ea didn't like snap it up immediately so there's actually going to be another one but the reason i love this game so much is if you are a fan of south park at all this game is literally like playing an episode of south park except that's what i've heard from just about everybody except actually i wouldn't even say it's like playing an episode of south park it's like playing an entire season of South Park because there is so much to it. There's so many inside jokes. Um, it and it tells its own story really well. I I could not gush about it more. It has some technical issues with it, but not enough to ruin the game for me. I really couldn't couldn't suggest it more. If you, yeah, if you like South Park and you don't play this game. And real quick, what would you say to those of us who do not like South Park or have not watched South Park? In my case, like I have never watched it. Um, but I own the game. I hear it's a great RPG, and I'm just excited to like. I'm excited to experience it. But like, what would you say to push me over the edge for it? If you do not like South Park, then you just should not get the game. Well, if you don't like South Park, yeah, I mean, plain that... and simple. If you are not sure either way, or if you're curious, in this if, sense, if you're curious, I would say you need at least some exposure to the TV show just to know if the humor is going to be something that you will enjoy because i mean i i've seen clips and stuff so i, I get the idea yeah if, if like it's humor, not like i'm totally in the dark if the humor appeals to you at all i feel like you have to get the game um in terms of like the actual rpg elements it's not it's not like the it's not earth is incredibly um in depth for an rpg it's it's pretty basic but it and the combat is i would say the combat is sort of like um Sort of like the Paper Mario series in some ways. Yeah, that's, so, you sold you sold me already. So yeah. let's let's do it. I'll play that soon. So it's it's enjoyable, very enjoyable. I thought. All right. Uh, sorry. Let me do I mean, mine. It, it is in my top fifty. So let me do my number forty. And this is a this is one that I, I actually mentioned a couple weeks ago when we were adding to the bucket list, and I added Guitar Hero, um, and then I went on to say. I mean, I eventually became a rock band person, and the pinnacle of that series to me, Rock Band 2, Xbox 360, my number 40. Um, this game, man, it just, it, it, it hit at, like, you talk about hitting at the right time. This was the perfect game for me at the time, at that time in my life. I was just really getting into, like, classic rock music. There's so many great songs, all the thousands of songs of DLC, like, literally thousands of songs you could download and play for like a couple bucks and it just made parties so much more enjoyable um rock band 2 one of my favorite games of all time just thinking about it makes me want to move it up but i just i don't feel like i can i just haven't played it in such a long time i feel like maybe it hasn't held up as a party game because you know nobody wants to like break out those plastic instruments anymore but it holds that place in my heart forever and i, I don't think it will ever leave my top 50 just because of that reason it was a lot of fun to play those games, and I'm actually sort of shocked that you have it on your list. Um, it's just, it's so good. It, it, everything about it, it's super polished. I love the tour mode. 
um, where you, you go to all these different like little clubs and they have like funny names and you go to all these different cities. You can pick your set list. You can play a themed set list, like sad songs or like upbeat songs and stuff like that. I, I, it's just, I haven't played the game in literally like four or five years at this point, but that's what I remember. And I remember being able to create your rocker and I remember it being very funny. Uh, the, like you can create like weird looking people. It's, it's great. There's so much good stuff. All right. So, number 39 now. 39. For me, it is Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, which okay. I literally we talked about just that talked one. about that, what, two weeks ago? Yep, and so you just added it this year. It's probably the newest game that's on your list, right? It is easily the newest game on my list, and yeah. uh, it is fantastic. I just, I, I really wanted to put it higher up my list, but I tried to be as objective as possible and think about, well, I played this game, it's fresh in my mind, after some time, I might move it down my list. So, or up if if it does stay yeah, fresh. Yeah, or in your or head. up if it's if it yeah. still remains amazing. Um, I've actually haven't even dabbled in the online portion of it yet, and I from what I understand, you could probably stay away from that part of it. Yeah, I think I need to stay away from it. So <laughs> it'll um, ruin a great game for you, I think. It's Phantom Pain, probably the best sandbox self game I've ever played by far like it's not even close because you just have so much freedom in what you can do it's absolutely nuts there are still yeah there's there's new things you can do pretty much you'd have so much freedom you'd think you were in america oh uh is america that free anymore oh wait yeah it is no i'm not gonna get into that it still is bad bad idea all right or so yeah mugger solid five phantom pain that's my number 39 how about yours the Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds is my number 39, up seven spots from last year. And incidentally, last year would have been right around the same spot you have it on your list this year. Yeah, it's very um, close. So I, is, is this our first like shared game that we've mentioned on our lists? I believe it is. Yeah, so I, I will echo all the things you said about it. Um, I love the... I mean, I, I even talked about it a little bit last week. I, I love the mechanic where you can go into the wall and you can just come out in a different location. It, I, it adds so much, no pun intended depth to the puzzles that it's uh <laughs> it, it just yeah well, it was totally unintended um i i just i love the presentation of it i love how it kind of captures that a link to the past field just on 3ds and uh, the the 3d effect also works really well in that game too i don't know if anyone yeah has ever really noticed because most people just play with the 3d off try it with it on on this game it's really nice i have tried it with uh, the 3d on and it is it is actually very nice yeah i i haven't played it in a while i'm gonna go back to it soon uh, I I'm getting the itch for it right now, and I'm playing a lot of Zelda games, so yeah, I will play it soon. I great game. Almost feel like between I should worlds. Play it again soon. Buy it if you if you can find it. It's it's getting pretty rare now because nobody ever trades it in or anything because it's so great. Um, go buy it, Nintendo. You need to make more copies of this game. What are you doing? One thing that I will throw out there about a link between worlds that they didn't say last week is, it was so good for me that I 100 percented it within I think it was like two days. And, oh my and, god! And it, with all with all the like little octolings or it, whatever it they're was called, like, it was ridiculous. It was like the only thing I did. And then immediately after I did that, I played on the harder difficulty and like did that for the next week. So like in like a week and a half, I played through the game and 100 percented it twice on both difficulties. It was just that good that I, I I had to have more of that. And there has not really been a game, um, that has sucked me in that much, uh like before, until like the phantom pain well there it, absolutely has been for me we'll talk about that one a little bit later but uh all right so good choice for your number 39 number 38 for you Go so ahead. i don't believe you've talked about this yet uh but for me resident evil 4 and oh, oh how could you have it so low you're hurting me probably because i haven't actually played it for a while but i'm specifically going with the wii version of the game which sort of stinks because the Wii edition actually has some resolution, like some really weird resolution quirks where it's, I believe it's just like the GameCube image, but expanded for like widescreen. So gross. It's, it's not as high resolution as it really should be. Um, but that doesn't even matter because game still looks amazing. Game still plays amazing. The Wii remote adds so much to it. I don't know if, if I play this game again, there's a very good chance that I'll just move it back up my list because it is, you, 
it is that good of a game and there's so much to do in it i had the opportunity the other day, the other day um i was at a GameStop and i was shopping around and i saw they had resident evil 4 wii edition and i i could have bought it it's like 10 bucks um i didn't That's i went with the, I, I went with mercury meltdown revolution instead oh but, man um, oh come on whoa Hey, that's a good game. It have was you played cents. the Wii edition? No, I have not. Now, and I'm not, now I just well, need to smack you upside the head because that how is about just you, a fool's choice. Send me choice. your copy of Resident Evil 4 Wii edition. No, you can wait for it to be $10 again. Well, it's $10 now. So go get it. This was like the other day. I'm gonna. I'm keeping my edition. It's well, not going anywhere. Tell you what, I will think about it. If you, if you, uh, well, well, we'll make a deal in some way. All right. And I'll, I'll I'll play it eventually. I am gonna play Resident Evil Four again soon. Maybe maybe this is the opportunity I need to jump into the Wii version. But all right, so Resident let's move Evil, on. Or, so thirty eight for you. Yes, thirty eight for me. Oh, this is a good one. This is a brand new game to my list. Came out in two thousand fourteen. The game is the highly anticipated Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Um, now for me, um, this game eliminated the need for me to ever play another Smash Brothers again, with the exception of the first game sometimes uh i love super smash brothers for wii u i am so bad at it uh <laughs> I, I i am a horrible loser you never want to play me online because i will lose and i will like rage quit and i will not talk to you for days and this is true you can ask well, there uh, is Nick no about voice that. chat anyway yeah well <laughs> oh god <laughs> careful uh Shots you'll, you'll enrage you'll enrage the fanboys um but uh but I love Smash for Wii U. It's so good. Everyone who didn't play it is missing out big time. Um, the game is gorgeous in HD. It's it's so much fun to just like look at people playing the game. And I generally don't like esports or watching people play Smash Brothers. I'd rather be in there myself. But honestly, I've watched some of these tournaments. It's it's pretty fun to watch. And I do not like doing that usually. So Smash for Wii U is my choice. You've all played it. You all know how great it is. So that's exactly. it. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, number 37 for me is Mega Man 4 for the original Nintendo. And this is a little bit unorthodox because this is the only Mega Man title in my top 50. I did not choose Mega Man 2. I did not choose Mega Man 3. That is Mega a very Man strange choice. You didn't pick Mega Man X either. Nope. I went with Mega Man 4. And for me... Or Mega Man 64, the all-time great. For me, Mega Man 4 was the pinnacle of the series on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Sure, it didn't have as much content as 3, where in, in 3 you fight both the Mega Man 2 bosses and the Mega Man 3 bosses late in the game. Kind of like Pokemon Gold. Yeah, that's really what it is. And Mega Man 4 doesn't have that. But Mega Man 4 was sort of the first one to, I feel like, really try to um, mix up the gameplay. And it introduced a new sort of uh, evil mind behind the whole thing in dr cossack or cossack and i just i loved it it had this whole uh it introduced the mega buster where you can it was the first game where you could charge your shot in a mega man game and when i played mega man 2 and 3 as a kid i couldn't stand how you couldn't charge your shot it drove me nuts another part of it was mega man 4 for me had the best music and some of the coolest robot masters so Really, I feel like it's interchangeable. You could go with any of the first several Mega Man games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I feel like Mega Man 4 is passed over a lot just because it didn't sell nearly as much as Mega Man 2 or 3. Because those two games sold significantly more in the series than the other ones did. I like your number 36 juxtaposed, uh, juxtaposed with your number 37. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, exactly. Yeah, uh, my number thirty-seven is the Legend of Zelda: The Minish Cap, another another Zelda game. Uh, the namesake of our lovely news show, The Minish Cap, uh, The Minish Recap. Um, the Minish Cap is an often overlooked Legend of Zelda game, and even myself, I often overlook this game, and I don't know why. It's amazing. It's the best Zelda handheld game. It's like it's just ten to I think it's ten to twelve hours of just like amazing handheld experience. The dungeons are great. I love the animation and the artwork in the game. Oh man! Everything is like it's hand drawn and it's detailed and it's it's just it looks like it was crafted by like the most loving crafter ever. That was such a lame <laughs> sense. <laughs> I but really it, it, it's it's beautiful to look at. I love this game. I loved 
the depth of it to like how you'd go into areas and you're yeah. you're big and then later you'd like return to those areas and you would find out that you could do so much of it in minish form and it was just so cool like and then I remember there was the first time that there going was like... into the sh- the the shoemaker's shop and just being like this is so cool yeah, and then there's also the whole, like, oh, you can fuse kinstones with people, and then you have a reason to go back and explore other areas to, like, get treasures and heart pieces and stuff. And everyone always talks about the kinstone fusing, and I, I love it myself. I think it's great. I think it's fun to, like, find people that you might have, like, uh, you might have a matching little stone with them, and then you, you fuse it up, and then you get an item. But you have to go find that item, so it's like you have to go explore for it. Yeah. So Minish Cap is a game that has aged very well for me. I move it up my list every single year, when and did I moved you last up again this it? year. Um, it's I actually weirdly I haven't played it in a couple of years. It keeps moving up my All list, right. but I haven't played it. But I gotta go back. I gotta play. You know what? The the Zelda handheld games are so good, and people like to forget about them because of Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, but if you oh, take those two out, those and you have sour the, taste in my I, mouth. I mean, look at this. You have Link's Awakening, amazing. You have the Oracle games, very, very They're solid. Very good. You have the Minish Cap, amazing. incredible. The Link Between Worlds, fantastic game. I mean, that's, that's a lot of hits. That's a lot of hits, and then you know, you have the, combined with the fact that you have two console quality, uh, like, games on 3ds and ocarina of time and majora's mask two of the best games ever made the 3ds is the place you want to play most of your zelda games man because you can get all those games on there uh not sure if you can buy the minish cap on on 3ds i know you can get it on wii u but i i have it on 3ds because i was an ambassador so go me yeah i guess I, with the minish cap or sorry with the minish cap i really enjoyed it um it just the the world just didn't st- resonate with me as much as a link between worlds did it wasn't as cohesive for sure but yeah i i just i love the music and the way it looked and just like yep, the, exactly. the aesthetic of it to me was really really pleasing and that's why it gets just a little bit above a link between worlds that's for me. that's what i should say i shouldn't say that uh a link between worlds had a better world it like the world in a link between worlds wasn't as detailed and beautiful and i guess full of life compared to the Minish Cap. And that's what the Minish Cap has in terms for like Can you two- tell I love this game cuz I get yeah. so excited talking about it. Yeah, for the 2D for the 2D Zeldas, it easily has the most intricate and detailed world by far. So yeah, good and choice. I, I almost I really wish Nintendo would go back to this style instead of like this faux 2.5D overhead Phantom Hourglass Spirit Tracks ugly as crap model. I hate that. It's um, so it's hideous. My my big problem with the DS games the DS Zelda games is they looked so awful. I couldn't even believe that those games came out. They just were bland and the first, lifeless compared the first to cut scene, the Minish Cap. Oh, the first cutscene in Phantom Hourglass were like you see Link close up and he's like waving or something. It's like, oh my god, like put that back in, in its grave. Like I don't want to <laughs> see that ever again. <laughs> I'm glad you look it's at it the same way as I do. All right. Uh, yeah. So great 36. Choice. Number 36 for me. Mega Man uh Mega Man number 12 or whatever. Just what? kidding nothing similar very close yeah that's this that was is, the joke this is like i can't if, buy man i can't buy a laugh today it's embarrassing this this is like if Mega Man actually continued to evolve and just evolved in like sort of a different kind of way and, and this, he gained and he gained a suit of armor and a shovel and his name was shovel knight and his name became shovel knight man fantastic game shovel knight is my number 36 it is it is really just an 8-bit game with the most perfect modern gameplay i could ever imagine i i could not believe how good this game was it is fantastic um so we sort I should of talked s- about it when i did my 52, i should 52. say there weren't any games between a link between worlds and the phantom pain that like caught my attention is like that that caught my attention but that is wrong because shovel knight when i played it it just i couldn't put it down it was amazing from beginning to end and uh, it actually just came out with this recent DLC, Plague of Shadows, and I'm hoping to get into that and count. And that you're, as count- you're counting that as a as a game, right? Because it's a full like expansion that actually adds I mean, to the game. It is essentially playing through Shovel Knight all the way again, just as a different character. So I feel like it's a it's a replay. So, yep, I'm really looking forward to playing it again. Um, if you haven't played Shovel Knight yet, 
you dude what are you waiting for yeah. i already already gushed about it the other week what are you waiting to <laughs> why, why are you still waiting now even if you two, don't like two old jerks games, proof of it yeah even if you don't like old games you need to play shovel Knight. yeah you need to play it you'll Just, gain an appreciation for older games you that will you never had which is exactly what happened to me i i totally appreciate older games now because of shovel knight all right let's see your number 36 um now my number 36 and this is the last one we're gonna do today is this is a game that i also played this year someone is knocking at my door let me uh cut this part out and i'll be right back all right I'll just keep it running Oh my god, I said I was going to cut it out, but I just got a package delivery live on air. Here we go. I'm going to open it right now. Let's see what it is. And then I'll reveal my number 36. You didn't stop by recording, did you? I did not. It is Danganronpa 2. Fantastic. Uh, goodbye, despair. And goodbye, my life, because I'm going to spend the next 25 hours plus playing Danganronpa 2. So, this is really exciting. It came with the original case and everything. Good awesome. job, GameStop.com, which is where I bought this from. Excellent. That's actually sort of I will, I will be returning. So, uh, what were we doing? Oh, I was going to reveal my number 36 All right. before number I got 36. To my package delivery. So, just, um, just like start over. Now again. I'm too excited. Now I'm going to go. No, I'm not going to start it over. I'm going to keep all that <laughs> stuff in because right. it was exciting. This is effortless. Oh, God. Uh, my number 36 is Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy. This is a game I talked about earlier. Oh, wow. In, excuse me. Earlier in the year on uh, my 5252 this is one straight up one of the best 3d platformers i've ever played it is so enjoyable like from beginning to end like you just you get sucked into this great world with these hilarious characters and the the world feels very connected because you go from one area to another there's no loading times or anything like that you collect you you collect stuff it never gets out of control like any generic 3D platformer that was on N64 they really perfected that formula i think in Jack and Daxter the the collectathonness because you really only have to get like one or two things yeah um and ultimately it's just a great experience every, every character like pops with like uh what what is the word i'm looking for with character that's <laughs> i just i couldn't think of anything else they're but they, vibrant they, yeah they're they're very vibrant and the, the whole world really in general is is very vibrant um the music is great uh it's just a great experience from beginning to end if you haven't played this game um th this is one that may not have even been on your radar it has aged incredibly well i would highly recommend it if you've yeah, got it a actually PS has if you've got a PS3, you could buy the collection. I really don't know how Jack 2 and Jack 3 are. I hear they're not that great, honestly. But, they, but Jack Jack and Daxter is a game that you must play. It is fantastic. Still fantastic today. The sequels tried to do new things, and just in doing so, the series sort of lost its identity. It almost yeah, needed that's, to be that's completely sad. unrelated games. Um, but yeah, that's a really good choice. And like thinking back to Jack and Daxter now, it is, isn't it like an almost an open world like streaming game every yeah there's no streams. there's no load times at yeah. all it's just it's just like metroid prime you know when you're going through like all the, the caverns basically the load times are in are when you're walking from area to area like you'll you'll be walking and then it'll be loading as you go it is it is easy for me to see how the uncharted games looked so good on the playstation 3 because with jack and daxter they really did a great job of um, hiding level of detail pop in and those kinds of things and like using those techniques to be to be clear uh, naughty dog developed both those games yes that's to yeah. be clear um so yeah that that is our top 50 for the week right that's everything yeah that is everything so uh if you would like before we sign off today i can uh, go into exactly what this uh information that i'm giving you about the nx was with the developers and um, oh yeah go ahead so here it is from the um, new developer portal um, for yeah for developers, and this is Nintendo's message to them, and it's pretty much saying our new website makes publishing simple. This new website ha or has one goal: to make your lives easier. We're hard at work making more and better tools to help you self-publish, digitally publish, and publish at retail. Our plans are big because yours are. 
We'll soon have advanced project tracking and ROM submission, project-based message boards, and more, helping you with every step from concept to publish to counting your accolades. And as always, you'll have the best global developer support team ever right from the start, making the Nintendo Developer Portal your go-to resource. Shoot, so, I think I'm, I'm going to go develop for Nintendo right now. So I'm going to go be a game maker and, and publish on a Nintendo platform. That fired me up right there. It really Especially sounds like that they want our, to do something big with this. Our goals are big because yours are or whatever. That, that's, really, that's a really good line. That's a catchy line. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, yeah. If yeah, there's man, anything else a, you'd like to add, this is a good nothing. show. Can we can we cut out like the first half hour and just do the, like the last half hour? Because the last that last half hour was all time, man. That was just really good. Bam, bam, bam. I mean, no offense. I mean, the the, the first part you'll was just good have too, to send. A, you'll just have to put a little message at the beginning if you don't want to listen to Piddle talk about a bunch of games for half an hour. Just skip to this. <laughs> man, you're hurting my feelings. I made so no, much, no, 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 no. I made no, so it, much progress this no, week. No, it was good. You did a great job. Just don't ever play. Just don't ever play six games again. All right, this week I'll play ten. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. I think we're done, right? That's it. That is it. So thanks for listening to our stupid show. Yep. Thanks for listening. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your girlfriends, share with your children, um, share your significant with, others. Share with your your cat and your dog. I don't care. Really, we'll we'll take anybody right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like. Uh, like we'll take the scum of the earth like we just need some more views honestly like <laughs> like we'll 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 get those people out of the system you know when we get a little more popular but for now if they want to help us pad our numbers that's great you know if you if you know any of those people you know just like just sit them down in a little chair at the library with their with their borrowed headphones and just like put the show on and just be like hey just listen to this for like half an hour and uh you know and maybe you'll maybe you'll view the world a little world a little more differently maybe you'll want to go out and be successful and get a job and have a nice little family and and not and and a cat stuff. and a dog and a cat and a dog all right so for spiegel i am piddle this is effortless i'm gonna go take a nap